The last temptation is the greatest treason, to do the right deed for the wrong reason. T.S. Eliot. Okay, first I'm going to have to ask everybody to do a small favor for me. All you need to do is just leave it in the comment. I need you to think of a scientific principle. That doesn't even have to be very scientific. As a matter of fact, it could be outright wrong. It could be as ridiculous as you want and as obscure as you want. Basically, what I want you to do is to challenge me to, to derive that principle from a series of books of which the names I'm not yet going to give. I've wanted to read these books for a while, so while I'm reading them, I am going to find whatever it is that you say that I cannot find in those books. And I'm going to pick probably the, the top three or something that's probably the most ridiculous. Just as a little challenge. Uh, now I'm going to have to go with the sad news. As most of you know, Snow is no longer with us. One of his brothers, of which he has many, has inherited his YouTube account and is going to carry on in the tradition which he probably would have wished for. We all will miss his videos. He has taught us all about Islam. Many of the Muslims have, especially me. I mean, namely me. Uh, and I think a lot of other people have been educated by his videos, too. His uh, anti-evolution videos, priceless, for sure. And, of course, he had some nice comments, and he had a good personality. So we are sad to see him go. Unfortunately, it was the atheist who actually did it. They found out where he lived, and well, I'm not going to say who it was. I have some inside information. But don't worry about it. It wasn't really too surprising. I mean, he knew what was going to happen. And I couldn't find any atheist videos that actually said this. I think that they're kind of ashamed or something. They're kind of hiding it. But some Muslims do say this. Islam and Friends, they put out a video explaining how you, that you could turn away from Islam and you wouldn't have retribution. Nobody would kill you. And as a matter of fact, Muhammad converted a guy. The guy came back later and said that he wanted to take back, it was the next day, to take back his vow. Muhammad refused but didn't kill the guy. However, if you do turn away from Islam, and this video says that if you turn away and you intend it harm, that retribution is required. This is a comment on one of the videos, on the video. Great video, one question. The punishment for apostates of Islam who work against it is death. But would the same punishment be prescribed to a non-Muslim who worked against Islam from within the Muslim society? If not, why not? Islam and friends. As far as I know, the punishment for treason is universal. I don't think it's I don't think it applies to Buddhists, but yes, it, it actually is universal. The religion of atheism does have uh, punishment for treason, just as Islam does. It's, it's actually pretty close. So, yes, he used to be an atheist, and then he turned to Islam, became a Muslim. So he died a Muslim. And he put out a whole bunch of anti-atheist videos. So there's really nothing to do. I mean, nobody can really be blamed for it. It was, we could see it coming from a mile away. It was just a matter of time. But don't worry, I'm sure the atheists were humane. Who knows, perhaps he'll be resurrected or something like this by his God. And we'd all be glad to see him when he comes back. I'm sure he will come back. Okay, now for some Islamic logic. There's actually some pretty funny stuff. Although, I know it's actually pretty sad, and I think I'm getting kind of tired of it. One guy says that Allah spread out the earth like a carpet, and the carpet's a nice thing to walk on. It keeps you from the lava from burning your feet. And, of course, that's just how the earth's crust is. Unfortunately, the Quran doesn't say spread out like a carpet. It simply says spread out. Although, of course, some people say shaped like an ostrich egg. But there's quite a deviation in translation here. Anyway, it doesn't say carpet. It probably means glue. I think it means spread out like glue the earth. And, of course, we know it's not sticky. So, of course, the Quran is just false because it's not spread out like glue. That's stupid. Oh, yes, he also talking about the round earth. He says that Muslims knew this a long time ago. And he points to, even Tamiya died 1328. Celestial bodies are round. As it is the statement of astronomers and mathematicians, it is likewise the statement of scholars of the Muslims. In other words, oh, we already knew that, we already knew that. Oh, put away the books, put away the books. If you read some of the old hadiths, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh... 
So anyway, Ibn Hazim, Ibn uh, Zhao Si, and others have quoted that the Muslim scholars in agreement that all celestial bodies are round. Indeed, Allah has said, and he, Allah, is who has created the night and the day and the sun and the moon, that each float in a phallic. Even Abba says phallic is, phallica is the light that of the spinning of a wheel. The word phallic in Arabic language means that which is round. Yes, the orbit of the planets is round. Although I think you might be able to see the logical flaw. Because the International Space Station flew over my house last year. It actually flew over pretty quick. And it was floating in an orbit. It was floating in a phallic too. What's what shape is the International Space Station? Left as exercise for the reader. Uh, let's see. I was also talking to a long conversation in one of my videos to Bungie Can Fly. Bungie Can Fly, he's uh, quite a funny guy. He laughs a lot at my comments, I guess. And he says that I say that when, uh, when the heavens and earth, we're talking about the heavens and earth being split apart, it, it says cloven asunder, and I agreed, and I also said that it means unwoven. And he says that I mean that cloven asunder means unwoven. No, I mean that the Arabic word uh, fatakwa, I think, fatakwa, means uh, unwoven or cloven asunder. So it can mean either one. Of course, fatak, you know, sewn, uh, unsewn. And actually, I think I have a verse. Yes, I do. The word fatak, uh, translated as sewn, means mixed each blended in Arabic dictionaries, it is used to refer to two different substances that make up a whole. The phrase, we unstitched, is a verb, fataqwa, in a Arabic, which implies that something comes into being by tearing apart or destroying the structure of the fatak. The sprouting of a seed from the soul is one of the actions which this verb is applied. This is from an Arabic site, Mission Islam. So I'm not, I'm not being unscientific, but un, unsown. I'm not sure, uh, the guy can read Arabic, so I don't know why he's complaining. But he is complaining because he says that it means singularity instead of unstitched and all this junk. Singularity. And this is how he proves it. Well, this is his argument. The Quran says that the heavens and earth were at one piece in the beginning. And in a singularity in the beginning, everything is one piece. Therefore, the Quran says that everything was a singularity. Right? Although, of course, if you study logic, or if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and explain how, demonstrate how this is false. I own a cat. A tiger is a cat, therefore I own a tiger. The logic doesn't hold up, and so it doesn't. Anyway, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, I have always considered it as a treason against the greatest republic of human nature to make any man's virtues the means of deceiving him. And using bad logic and people's poor understanding of it to deceive people, I think is one of the greatest treasons.